So let us move on other technical application of knitting. So knit for e-textile, so e-textile is now uh, becoming more popular in 21st centuries because uh, here we are integrating electronics in textiles for healthcare monitoring and for other advanced functions. So if you see e-textiles basically it gives you the flexibility of uh, monitor your health uh, with the help of uh, heart rate sensors, posture sensors, temperature sensor, respiration sensors. Also in e-textiles you can give you smart functions like heat therapy, automatically the fabric will uh, give you some heat therapy or some kind of active compressions. So uh, many research are being done in these areas where they are either monitoring your health or giving some kind of smart activation or smart actuation for your body. So some of the key areas I have listed here, uh, we are also doing research in this area, I am going to show you uh, in the next slides. So the first area is like active compression, so nowadays uh, smart materials are available which you can integrate in the textile, so especially in knitted textiles you can integrate those smart materials and you can get active compression out of it. Uh, so this is what is possible nowadays, so you can you can take uh, make a smart stocking which can give you some kind of massage effect, you can wear some kind of garment which will automatically compress and release, so uh, some kind of these kind of smart activations is possible when you integrate these smart materials in this structure. So what do you mean by those smart materials? So one of the materials which is very popular in research is safe memory materials. So safe memory materials uh, are the materials which behaves differently in presence of a stimulus. So it is nothing but if you see the pine cone, uh, it also has the similar properties. So in dry state it is actually opened up, but the moment you put moisture, automatically it changes its shape. So in wet state it is like this, in open states it is like this. So the same properties of pine cone can be generated with the help of safe memory material and in polymer if you see uh, smart polymers are available such as safe memory polymers which uh, when you heat it, it will automatically shrinks and give some kind of tight performance. So these are stimulus responsive materials, so in presence of heat, temperature, pH, electricity, they can change the shape, they can change the modulus, they can change the stiffness and give you smart function. So for example here I am showing this smart polymer, you are controlling the pressure uh, on the surface. So uh, the same thing in knitting actually gives you a very useful platform where you can integrate these smart polymers in the form of filament, either you can use tuck and float, such structures you can generate where the smart filament will be the part of this fabric and uh, you can get smart functions out of it. So I have this sample with me uh, where I can show you these, the red one uh, which is the smart filament or safe memory filament which is integrated in the fabric structure. So let me show you this fabric, so in the form of tuck and float, so this is the smart stocking, so, so a kind of a stocking, this is smart fabric and uh, if I zoom for you, you could be able to see those smart filament in this, so now you can see this is the smart filament which is floating in the form of tuck and float in this structure, okay. So once you integrate these type of smart filament where knitting plays a very important role in controlling and placing the smart filament in the structures, you can then activate these type of materials and generate different level of pressure. So for example here the in the loose state you can wear it out and automatically the fabric will become self tight um, and generate different level of pressure and you can reverse this also. So you can get a kind of massage effect or a stocking which will give you massage effect. Similarly you can generate pressure garments on the knitting, um, you can integrate these type of filaments and you can get a smart fit garments. All the garments can be used in a loose state and, and automatically with the help of heat 
you can make the garment self tight so self tight garments can be made uh, if you use smart materials in this knitted structure here i can show you so in the loose state you can wear it out you can put it this is the pressure sensor so in the loose state you can wear it out this is this is active compression and and uh, and automatically the fabric will become tight the moment you give some kind of heat and you can generate different level of pressure so this is the beauty of active compressions which is now possible so in the e textiles also um from the engineering point of view knitting gives you those flexibilities to play with different float and tuck designs uh, especially the smart filaments you can keep more uh, floating length and you can also play with different materials ground materials and you can get different level of pressure so depending on loop length depending on the tuck and float designs uh, the performance can be tuned so this is the engineering part so that's why knitting become very very important not only it gives you the flexibility in terms of integration of uh, foreign materials in the textile structure but also you can tune it properties by playing with loop architecture the other material uh, similar to this is uh, safe memory materials which is safe memory alloys so in in rib network you can put safe memory alloy in this and you can activate it and you can get dynamic benefits so i also have the safe memory materials with me uh, which i can show you this also have the similar functions but uh, very useful in some aspect so this is uh, you can see this again in a rib structure so this is the safe memory safe memory wire so this is your safe memory wire which is with the help of braiding the entire wire is integrated in the fabric structure and this is the part of the fabric so you cannot take out very easily so if you try to pull it it cannot be taken out and this is the stocking where the polymer was integrated in the stocking so both safe memory wire or safe memory polymers both flexibilities are there to get active compression out out of it so here you can uh, put the wire and lock those wire in the loops and you can generate a smart pressure or, or dynamic pressure with the help of current source a voltage source okay the other areas of e textiles where uh, knitting can play a very useful platform is the heating fabric so in heating fabric you can uh, put heating wires inside the fabric structures and you can get different level of temperature by controlling voltage so uh, here also i can show you i have some samples with me so if you want to put any heating filament so this is this is how this is one of the flexibilities on a rib network the filament can be can be fixed inside okay and you can control the spacings also of heating heating filament in the rib network so let me show you the actual samples which i created so there are three types of uh, thread densities so this is uh, this is the heating wire so the copper wire which is there and uh, you can get different thread densities so this is high thread densities this is low thread density and this is even different thread densities of heating wires so once you have this you can supply the power in this and because of joule heating it will give you different values so mostly the filament which is used for heating is either silver coated copper coated so this is this is your silver coated filament okay so if you give current to this because of the joule heating it will generate heat and the temperature will be rise so this is what is done here also so in knitting you can you can fix the filament inside the fabric structure you can control different thread densities 
and with the help of different level of voltage you can generate different temperature and you can use it underneath the garment and uh, for orthopedic applications and for normal heating application. Uh, usually in generation of heating fabric we can go for either stainless steel, uh, metal alloy, uh, silver coated filament which I just showed you or the copper filament which also I showed you just now. So in silver coated filament is mostly used, you have the silver uh, which is uh, coated um, over the surface of nylon filament and once this is there you can put it inside the fabric structure either in the form of loop or in the form of float. So here also you can see the stainless steel filament and the normal filament are knit together to create plied loops. Okay. So this is how you can generate heating fabric and you can go for different application. Other key aspects where knitting can be used is for making sensors. So for sensing we can go for e-textile. So in e-textiles you can easily inside a knit structure you can use sensors, you can integrate those sensors in the fabric and if the fabric is stretched uh, the sensors will give you those readings and you can find out the extensibility. So stretch sensors you can you can generate. So I have those stretch sensor in the, with me. So this is a simple stretch sensor. So if you stretch it, the resistance of these sensors will be changed. So depending on that, you can find out how much stretch is happening. So this is a rubber cord stretch sensor. So once these sensors are there, you can, you can integrate inside the fabric structure which is just shown here. So you can see the red one is integrated inside the rib structures and which is the part of the fabric. Similarly, you can integrate these type of stretch tension inside the fabric and you can generate a stretch monitoring fabrics which can be used for e-textiles. So I have also shown you for here like different types of double jersey fabrics whether you go for rib design or tuck design or float designs, different types of performance can be shown here. So uh, usually the tuck one is giving better results um, in a stretch sensor. Uh, similarly, uh, you can go for electromyography. So if you want to find out the neuro signals, you can integrate conductive filaments in the fabric structures and the moment if you go for any movement, there will be some changes on the surface resistance of these fabrics and which you can tune. So um, electrode, knitted electrode based uh, garments are now being used for surface electromyography which is very much useful in prosthetic application. So I also have these type of fabrics with me which I can show you. So this is again, so conductive filament are knit with the fabrics and if you stretch it the resistance will change and that signals you can acquire for getting the body response. So this is also you can see the conductive filaments are integrated in the fabric. So these are some of the conductive filaments. There are different types of conductive filaments now are now available in the market, silver based, copper based. Uh, steel based and uh, depending on the applications you can choose different types of conductive filament. Energy harvesting textiles are also used using knitting. So whenever you go for energy harvesting textiles you need two types of materials. One is tribo negative material and tribo positive material and if you apply pressure on this um, the energy is being generated. So usually polytetrafluoroethylene yarn and uh, nylon yarns are more suitable. So polytetrafluoroethylene is triboelectric negative layer, nylon is triboelectric positive layer. So if you make two types of fabric, uh, knitted fabric, one positive uh, triboelectric material, another negative triboelectric material and if you try to rub it out or apply some pressure, the electricity will be generated and that you can harvest. 
So energy harvesting also knitting is playing very much important roles. Uh, especially tubular jacquard is, uh, I found some literatures where tubular jacquard are actually used. So two types of uh, um, materials, triboelectric positive material, you can say this yellow one is a triboelectric positive material, the green one is a triboelectric negative materials and they are placed opposite to each other and whenever the pressure is applied, the charge will be accumulated. So with the help of conductive fabric on the top, you can harvest those charges and harvest the energy. So this is how a simple knit designing is uh, useful in making smart technical products. Uh, you can see it here by tapping how much voltage can be generated. So up to 9 volt uh, is generated by simple tapping of two layers of fabric. Uh, the other key areas of knitting is for cushioning application. So in cushioning applications, usually 3D spacer fabric is used. So as I'll, I have already mentioned, 3D spacer fabric, there are two layers of the fabric which is connected by a spacer yarn. So this 3D spacer fabrics is actually created on double bed machines where one bed is making one layer of fabric, the other bed is making different layer of fabrics and these two layers of the fabric is connected by connecting guide bar. So here is the lapping plan for different guide bars. So there are actually six guide bars. So the top layer which is created by the left bed is made by guide bar 1 and guide bar 2. Connecting layer which is 3 and 4 which is connecting these two layers. The bottom layer is created by guide bar 5 and 6 and top layer is created by guide bar 1 and 2 on each of these two beds and three fourth are the connecting guide bar which is connecting top layer and bottom layer. So this is how you create 3D spacer fabrics and 3D spacer fabrics has very good compression properties. So once you compress this 3D spacer fabric, uh, it will give you elastic behavior, flow behavior and densification behavior. But the good part is when you release the compressive load, it bounces back. So this is the perfect material for cushioning. So uh, it gives you elastic and flow performance as well as recovery is very, very good. So that's why 3D spacer fabric is very much useful in cushioning application. Um, in knitting also, if you see, if you change the thickness of spacer fabrics, you will get different types of cushioning applications. You can see it here how when you are start compressing it, um, finally, as the thickness of the material is reduced, more and more spacer filaments are densified and because of that, the force or the compressive load increases after certain compressive strain. So uh, engineering point of view, you can play with different thickness of the spacer fabrics or you can play with different material of the spacer filament. Uh, you can go for multi-filament, you can go for multi uh, monofilaments. Uh, you can also go for different types of material. You can go for polyester, you can go for nylon, you can go for PP and you can check the compression performance. 3D spatial fabrics is now uh, being suggested for pressure ulcer applications where uh, usually when you sleep in on a normal mattresses because of poor breathability and uh, pressure peaks, usually you get ulcers or sores. We also call pressure ulcers as a bed source application. So once you use 3D spacer fabric underneath your body, uh, the pressure redistributions will be very, very good and there is a less chances for um, bed sores. So in uh, when you are using 3D spacer fabric for bed source applications, you can go for different types of uh, uh, lapping plan for connecting guide bars and you can generate different types of spacer fabrics and you can control the pressure. So 3D spatial fabric has a whole lot of research has been done in this areas and I expect you to please follow the literature on 3D spatial fabrics. Uh, they are being used in uh, protection, they are used for medical purpose, they are used for energy harvesting, they are, they are also used for cushioning. So different application of 3D spatials has been given in literatures uh, which you can follow and look for doing some project in this area.
um, knit for protective gloves. Knitting is also being used for protection. So, in protections like now the knitting also uh, because of a very good shear performance, knitting is used for cut resistance protective gloves where ultra high molecular weight polyethylene and high performance polyethylenes are used. Uh, we use uh, E glass, aramid or steel wire uh, in the structure to give you very good cut performance and mostly weft knitted plain structure are being used. So, I also have one cut resistance gloves with me which I can show you. These are the cut resistance gloves which is nowadays very much popular uh, especially many companies are following the standards for protection of their labor from cut. So, uh, you can you can use this cut resistance yarn in which you can have a steel wire. So, you can see it here this a steel wire is uh, is put it in under the core and normal filaments are wrapped around it. So, with this steel wire filament you can make these kind of gloves and you can test its performance. So, usually for protective gloves different types of standards uh, are being followed. For example, uh, to have a good quality gloves. Uh, you you need to test its abrasion resistance which is scale you, which is measured in the scale of 0 to 4 4 is the highest rating uh, cut resistance gloves uh, with coupe test 5 is the highest rating tear resistance 4 is the higher rest, highest highest rating puncture resistance 0 to 4 4 is the highest rating blade cut resistance uh, using iso uh, standards so, once you develop the gloves, you need to perform all of these testings and give there some marking. So, um, usually in knit point of view, uh, we can go for different types of gauge, um, 13 gauge, 10 gauge, 7 gauge and you can generate different types of uh, cut, uh, cut resistance gloves. So, highly dense loops, more open loops. So, this is how you can control the engineering and you can check the performance. Some data for example, if you if you develop a gloves on 7 gauge and 10 gauge, you can see how the properties can be different. So, a 7 gauge gloves where the loops are bigger, uh, the abrasion performance is better than 10 gauge. Similarly, if you see tier, tier remains same, but cut resistance of gauge 7 is better than 10 gauge. So, uh, this is how knit engineering is important in protection also. So, if you are working in the gloves fields, you can play with different gauge, you can play with different loop length, you can play with different materials and you can check the performance. Knit is also being used in composite applications where uh, you can you can make very irregular surface of uh, preforms using knitting because knitting has very good drape property and very good um, uh, very low stiffness because of which any three dimensional geometry can be performed very easily and uh, hence knit is very much useful in composite applications. Uh, multi axial fabric uh, from warp knitting is, to, uh, is useful in uh, knitting applications where the threads are moving in multiple directions and hence the properties are controlled in many directions. Here warp knit structure are used. Similarly, in weft knit also you can um, integrate a smart high performance filament in different directions and you can generate multi axial fabric in weft knitting category also. So, knitting also become very very useful in composite applications. Although uh, in terms of strength, knitting does not gives you that quality as respect to woven fabrics, but for some specific applications where the drape is the big concern, uh, then we use weft knitted or warp knitted structures for composite application. Other potential areas, if you see uh, knitting is not just limited to um, medical, electronic textiles, protection. Um, in fact, agriculture, there are many other areas where you can find lot of literatures which is available. Uh, for example, in artificial muscles, sports, rehabilitation, robotics, orthopedics, cars, 
जियो टेक्सटाइल सिविल सोलर पैकेजिंग एंड प्रोटेक्शन सो नाउ यू कैन सी हाउ इम्पॉर्टेंट इट इज टू अंडरस्टैंड द निटिंग बिकॉज निटिंग इज रियली अ वेरी यूजफुल प्लेटफॉर्म इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड द निटिंग एंड इट्स पोटेंशियल आई एम आई एम हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योर दैट यू वुड बी एबल टू जनरेट इनोवेटिव प्रोडक्ट्स इन योर एरिया सो विद दिस आई एम आई एम एंडिंग दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स इन केस इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट्स और एनी एरियाज विच यू रियली वॉन्ट टू लर्न प्लीज राइट ई मेल टू मी एंड आई विल ट्राई टू गिव यू राइट लिटरेचर इन दैट फील्ड बट इन माई ओपिनियन निटिंग is more useful when you do the practice because until unless if you will not make those fabrics if you will not see it by yourself all of these lectures will be just um, a paper work for you uh, until unless if you don't do the practice i don't think you would be able to learn the knitting so in my opinion whatever or wherever lab you are working you keep making different types of fabric samples keep learning the analysis keep doing the designing keep following other uh, innovative technologies in the field and this is how you can expand the beauty of knitting in the world so with this i am ending this series many thanks for uh, all of you for continuously listening to me uh, i am hopeful you will give the feedback for the next time um, if some uh, if something need to be added or removed from this lecture series uh, your suggestions are welcomed uh, thank you very much Uh, see you soon uh, in the nit exams thank you